Let's turn to uh, Wan Xiang's uh, U.S. path. Uh, the Wan Xiang American Corporation was founded in 1994, as you mentioned that there's a lot of acquisitions. Uh, so what, what, uh, what's your experience? Uh, any insight uh, or advice you can give to, uh, to the many Chinese companies <laughs> thinking about expanding their business in the U.S.? Yeah, I, I, I always want to say this, you know, I mean, uh, acquisition probably is the cheapest way for you to grow the business in, uh, in, uh, in other area. And uh, again, you know, we can build from ground zero, start from uh, scratch. Our issue, I would say this, our issue if we do do that, our issue will be our cost in the United States will be 50% higher than our competitor. Because nobody would believe you at the day one. And you have to get their home phone number, you have to call them, you have to offer 50% more. They're still not convinced of who you are. They still think, um, I have a pension with GM, why should I come with you? I couldn't even pronounce your company name. It's so difficult, <laughs> which it is They're very difficult. <laughs> and uh, we have, that's the reason I pick up my name, it's a, to be very simple, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Personal identification numbers, that's easy enough. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, so anyway. So uh, I would say, you know, in today's global market, if we can find a way that put our resources on the table and we can find another fair partner can put their resource on the table, now we truly have one plus one bigger than two. If we can successfully combine that, the magic will happen. You know, I use our you know, auto, uh, automotive uh, uh, business as an example. 2008, 2009, we bought a lot of uh, uh, asset. All this kind of asset we bought, our return on this, uh, on this investment are far away more than 100% a year, year by year, you know. So it's very powerful, frankly speaking. We got a union very much uh, appreciate because we saved the job. We got OEM very happy because uh, we keep their line open. We got all the governors and mayors sending us a letter to say, you know, thank you very much, you know, you, you bring the business back. And our shareholder is extremely happy because uh, this, is, this business model works. So the key is about how do we combine the resources together. From our point of view, that's, that's the key issue. We don't necessarily care whether it's the automotive industry or whether it's, uh, you know, clean energy industry. The key to us is that, do, can we bring some value? Is this value so unique that the other side doesn't have today so we can, you know, make ourselves as very unique global company? And uh, we did find it out due to the distance, due to the culture, due to the structural difference. Yes, the U.S. China is very different. You know, the economy system is different, company are different. So when you see the difference, now there's a value creation. If we're all the same, no gameplay. When there's a difference, now all of a sudden, when you can combine successfully, uh, we definitely think acquisition will be the easiest way and the, the, the least cost in the business. But on the other side, there's a catch. The catch is that now, when the money is on the table, can you share with the other party? If you cannot, then you're not going to have another opportunity. So when that comes to the play, reputation is very important. And uh, the open mind about the sharing the upside is very important. Uh, fortunately, when Shang has a philosophy, we're trying to balance, uh, always balance four, we, can, we call four stakeholder. Uh, customer, employee, shareholder, community. So when you balance that one out, then I think uh, you know, people will come to you. And uh, when people come to you, opportunity come to you, and business is all about opportunity at the end. You, know, you can realize on this kind of opportunity. And uh, you know, I would say that's the reason we really enjoy to be here in the United States and our business is doing extremely well. 